Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the DJI FPV goggles version 2 and the price drop and what that potentially means for that system. We'll touch a bit on the new goggles 2 as well as the O3A unit and we're going to talk a little bit about what you should do if you're considering getting yourself a new set of goggles or if you're looking to get into digital FPV because there's a lot in play right now. Before we do that though I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to make videos like this without their support. If you're interested in checking out the links in in the description there is a link there to my patreon and it's only by people supporting us via that am i able to keep making independent content like this we are around the corner from a very big launch from dji however i will not be sent a product from them or anyone else so we will be buying it as usual and as part of that i will be giving you my complete independent unbiased thoughts and if you'd like to support us to be able to keep doing that please do check out those links anyway let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at what's actually been going on with the v2 goggles this week and if you should consider buying a set now. So most of you probably have seen the news. However, DJI have dropped the price of the FPV goggles version 2. In the US, they've been dropped to $429. And this is quite a substantial drop from where they were in the past. If we hop over to the UK, they've dropped to £489. And in the EU, they've dropped to €569. Euros. Now, this price drop is pretty much across the board and it is available from dealers such as Get FPV, Rotoriot in the US are doing it. However, I have found in the UK and Europe things aren't quite as clear. Some are still showing the old pricing but don't have stock, whereas some are showing it at a slightly different pricing to what is being shown on DJI. And it sort of doesn't really make it clear what the situation with the pricing, especially in the UK and Europe, is right now. Now, as I've mentioned, this price drop is almost certainly as a result of what is coming around the corner, and that is the new goggles too. I have not spoke to any dealers myself, but Joshua Bardwell has said he has and that they've told him that this price drop is permanent. What is not clear though is is the product going to remain around forever or is this simply a stock clearance exercise to be able to get rid of these as we head towards the future with the goggles too. Right now, things are not 100% clear with the goggles too, with regards to support for the Vista and the DJI Air unit. We know the goggles too are going to support this new O3 Air unit as well as this new Avata drone, but it hasn't been confirmed 100% that they're going to confirm the older systems such as the Vista and the Air unit. I find it hard to believe they won't, and I suspect what we'll find is these new goggles will have support for that, and what DJI will simply do is continue to run the goggles v2 alongside that as a lower cost option i've actually been saying for a few weeks that if dji are serious about actually keeping in fpv and actually really developing their foothold in fpv they will turn the fpv goggles to into a lower budget option allowing people to get into digital cheaper than ever before I could even see a situation where they could even drop the price of the Vista maybe, allowing you to have a complete digital kit for around $500 to $600, depending on what the goggles pricing is. And it's going to be interesting to see how that develops as time goes on. Now, it is well known that Cadex will only be supplying the Vista as long as they've got supply. And once they're gone, they will no longer have them. However, you will still be able to get that ear unit from Runcam because they are still an official dealer with DJI. DJI. What isn't known is how long both the goggles and those ear units are going to be available for, whether we're still going to be able to get the DJI ear unit, although that is available on the DJI website, and what the long-term plan is for the system as it stands today. It's not particularly common for DJI to keep older systems around too long after they release a new one. However, this will all depend on what they want to do and achieve in FPV. As I've said, if they really do want to get a very good foothold, keeping the goggles V2 around with the Vista makes complete sense, giving it a lower cost entry into digital and then add support for the new O3A unit on the V2 goggles as it seems they are doing to allow people to then upgrade as time goes on. 
At this moment in time, there really is no major change other than there being a price drop and sort of a change of supplier on the Vista. You don't really need to worry. It's the longer term aspect that really isn't clear. Now, this new pricing does raise the question on if it's a good time to get into digital FPV if you're not in it already. Whilst it is a good deal, it really isn't a good time right now to peg your money on one specific system because there really is so much going on. We have the new DJI and O3 system around the corner. We have the Avatar system that is continuing to develop and we have the HD Zero system that's going to see a big jump forward with the launch of their goggles around October. As I did just mention, we are just around the corner from the big launch from DJI. We have the new Goggles 2 as well as the O3 ear unit and we have a lot of detail now on what we are expecting there. As I did say though at the start, it isn't 100% clear yet on if these new goggles that you see here are going to be backwards compatible with the current ear units, but I find it hard to believe they won't. What we do know though, is that the V2 goggles that you could buy today on offer will be compatible with the new drone and will be compatible with that new ear unit as far as we're aware. But again, I would wait until things have launched before making your purchase decisions, just so we fully understand what the picture is. The new goggles certainly do look like an improvement and it does now look like they do have removable antennas because they're now being listed is shown as a separate in the box and I do find these little screws here on either side interesting that the fact of it looks like that they may be for an external antenna so I certainly don't think they're holding the faceplate on having looked at the design so I don't really see a reason why you'd want to take that front end off. We obviously now have the picture on the ear unit as well, and there has been some rendering shared this week, which I'm not going to put up. They weren't really anything new, but you can now see that we do have this new O3 ear unit. You can see we have the camera, which is very much like we've seen from other DJI products, very much traditional DJI, more than what we've seen from FPV. But again, the details are fairly scarce. We don't know the ins and outs, but what we do know is that you're going to have a system here that will work with OLED goggles, 100 frames a second, and we should have 1080p in there as well, but we will wait and see what we actually get when the spec releases. The camera, we really don't know on what the situation is on size. If I show you there and just zoom in a little bit, you can see compared to those fingers, it's, it is a size, but it's just hard to get any form of perspective on that. But what you can see is this large overall front glass lens that is on the front. And it's not going to be like a traditional FPV camera. We are going to be able to just replace the lens if you damage it, unscrew it and screw it back in. We don't even know if other manufacturers are going to be making cameras as well. My personal belief is this is all going to be very much in-house DJI and that's how it will stay probably for the life cycle of this product with Runcam then simply carrying on supply of the Vista and Air unit, maybe cameras as well, as long as DJI allow them to do it. So as I said earlier, is it time to get into digital FPV? And the answer to that is yes and no. Today, my opinion is no, but by October, there will be a much clearer view on what the situation is. We have a lot going on. We're going to get the new HD Zero goggles, which I think are going to be fantastic. HDMI in, HDMI out, lower latency, open source software. You've then got the avatar system, which is improving and developing, although it's a very similar system to DJI. And obviously we will have DJI deliver whatever that is and we're going to have to then look at what the pricing is like on those ear units because there's talk between 250 and 300 dollars for those ear units the price of the goggles and that support for the older system dji i think are certainly going to come in swinging from a premium product point of view i don't think any part of this new system from them is going to be cheap it is not going to suit everyone and it is going to be a system that very much gives you probably the best overall but that is going to come at a cost and then you've got to decide whether that's going to be for you or if you want to look at something like avatar that sort of gives you dji but with the osd options or hd zero that's just going to smash both of them out the water with regards to features overall and lower latency Anyway, that's it from me. As I said at the start, if you found it interesting, please check out the links to my Patreon. As I've said, we will be buying these products when they release and I will be giving you my unfiltered thoughts as I always do. And if you want to support us in doing that, please do check them out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.